Thank you very much, Secretary Romulo. His Excellency, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, thank you for coming to the Philippines and showing how important this global forum on migration and development is for the United Nations and the peoples of the world. Vice President De Castro and the other officials of the Philippine government, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished delegates, thank you all for coming together for a cause that is important to my country and to yours, namely the nexus between migration and development. This is a cause especially dear to the hearts of millions of Filipinos here and overseas who are interconnected through a vast diaspora of expatriate workers. Migrant workers are honored by the government and the people for their sacrifice and dedication to their work, their family, and the nation. We welcome their contribution. But we long for the day when going abroad for a job is a career option, not the only choice for a Filipino worker. Our economic plans are designed to allow the Philippines to break out of this cycle. That is why we remain so stubbornly focused on the economy. We need to create and spread the wealth and keep the people working here at home. We are working to create appealing employment opportunities by focusing on the development of certain priority sectors that give high-income jobs, for instance, business process outsourcing, which has created about 400,000 jobs in the last seven years. All in all, we have created almost 7 million jobs in the last seven years. By continuing down this path, we hope to increasingly be keeping our best and brightest right here in the Philippines closer to friends and families, helping to build our communities, and providing the next generation of leadership. For the Philippines and for any country, for your countries, people are our biggest national asset at any time in the course of our economic, social, and political development. Development cannot occur in the economy without human development, that is, without human beings who are healthy, educated, employed, and able to care for their families. As both His Excellency Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and Foreign Secretary Romulo have said, today some 200 million people live outside of their nations of birth, many of them working. This number rises every year keeping pace with the advance of globalization. Indeed, migration is one of the dynamic forces behind the globalization that draws our world ever closer together. We inhabit a world where people, countries, businesses, cultures, and economies are so closely interconnected that we all catch cold if one of us sneezes hard enough. It is at one of those interconnections, the interface between migration and development, that we confront some of the most serious challenges to us to work together. As people migrate, they draw more than one country into their lives, their work, their family, the gains they make from migration, and their need for personal security and well-being become matters of import that cross national boundaries. These movements occur in all directions, not just south to north, but also south to south, north to north, and in every other conceivable direction. It is this ceaseless and restless movement of people that truly really links our respective countries not just the capital or goods that economists love to build their growth models on. It is people who stimulate the trade, 
business and economic exchanges that keep the global economy moving along. But unfortunately, countries are less equipped often to protect their people abroad in times of trouble than they are their money or businesses. The global financial crisis currently taking place challenges us again to gather our forces within government and in partnership with other countries to better protect our people abroad against financial and economic shocks and the side effects of such shocks. Exploitation, abuse, and other forms of ill treatment. All eyes may be glued on the stock market, but we must never lose sight of the often unseen impact of the global credit crunch on the long-term needs of the poor, including the migrant poor. It is the duty of our governments, of the United Nations, and I thank His Excellency Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for his attention to the world's poor, especially during this time of the financial crisis. It is the duty of all international organizations and global civil society to gather our collective will, our joint resources, and our common efforts to raise them up. 